I remember a long time ago, um, and it's about that time, you know, and uh, and they, well, you see it coming way over there. No, you know, get your stuff together, get your whatever you had outside, try to bring it inside or, you know, get the clothes off the line or whatever you had to do. But um, that was Suki, the, the chikos, and, and at that time, which, uh, Majita Duchich, uh, we kind of like more like different than how much. We were told that um, we had to get inside, be in, in the Jukos. And um, my grandfather would say that the, you know, the rocks are going to fly and the in your eye or in your ear or you know, your mouth or whatever. And so we were told to get inside. And uh, some people had windows. We had a big window. My dad's house, you know, with the kui. It's a big window. We could look out and see Mas Chuik, but the way they told us, when those storms come like that and the rain and the lightning came, and they would go, go inside and they would sit down and then don't say nothing from Itatika then. You know, just, just wait for it to pass. And then, uh, and I remember stories from Yagi that they will cover all the mirrors in the house. They will take, uh, you know, like blankets or whatever, because they are covering the mirrors. And don't stand by the window because it might blow off, you know, they might break and then come mai. But uh, now we have different kind of glass for Huggy and it doesn't really happen so much. But a long time ago, I guess, that's what they used to do. But it's like that with wind and uh, even uh, with um, you know, those uh, little whirlwinds, we call them tornadoes. They're not tornadoes, they're just whirlwinds. It does the same thing, but in a smaller scale. But um, those whirlwinds, they were told that when they come that, you know, to stand still or go inside or close the door and you know, the pista ubitama. So the wind is kind of like that more, you know, if you look at it. And throughout the culture myth, when you're, when you're um, reading or listening to the stories and all that stuff, and you hear about the wind, and it's always like that, like the air will start to move. And so we were told that, you know, that was dangerous. And so we used to go inside. And be more good that. And then I remember at the school when we were going to school at um, at San Rosa Boarding and Day School, the we would be out at the playground and the the would come the the whirlwind mood. And then some of the students, you know, knew that and they would stay away or move out of the way or go, you know, go stand by the building. But there were some students, I guess, might be amateur. They didn't understand it or were never taught, and they would run inside those uh, Um and then they tell us that, you know, later on, you know, when you get older, it's going to affect you. So we were always, you know, <clears throat> at least for Achim that kind of understood about the culture. We could hear our grandparents, our parents yelling at us if we went in there, even though they weren't there. And the, some of the teachers, the, uh, the autumn teachers that were there would yell at us and tell us to get away, get away, go, go over there. But some of the Mirdagan teachers would just kind of like laugh, you know, be amateur. So again, it's a different culture. So that's why I'm more than about this. Um, I was talking to Mike um, today, uh, Mike, Michael, um, what's your name? Uh, Son of your Michael, uh, Enos. You guys call him Mikey. I can't call him that. I don't know why. Michael, Mike. And uh, so I was talking to him, but... Um, Chidamaga either, and um, we was talking about the like kind of like what did people do a long time ago when they got when these things kind of hit. There's some studies and some papers that show or they talk about how people responded to like smallpox and all that stuff, but um, they don't really mention the, what the elders say. how much come you know to themselves to each other. Stuff that wasn't printed on there, and then if when they print something, it's just like a paragraph. But when all of them talk to you, it's more like you know, it takes a long time. And so, uh, <clears> the <throat> and I was telling him about you know the different things, and 
my natural amateur than how this disease has come here and um my that um they, they uh, wanted to go to a medicine person because they uh the coronavirus was <clears throat> that they tested positive or whatever in your bug that I don't think you can do that. Uh, first of all, I protect the medicine person, and it was like that. Like, well, don't they know how to cure in your bug? Okay, here's the difference. It's kind of like diabetes and high blood pressure and all those things. A long time ago, when all of them used to run all over the place and they ate different kind of foods, and everybody was real thin, you know, and you know, and it was a whole different life. And uh, we only ate from the desert. Now the white man brings their food, their their white flour, their you know their lard and their sugar and all that stuff, and starts adding it to our diet. And so the things that we try to do to take care of that won't really work because we're eating the white man's food. Because again, it's different. It's kind of the same thing with mamaka. Uh, I think that um, there's some things that I think you know that can be cured but other stuff like either mitigan sicknesses there's no way to to cure it because it's not like aboriginal to the desert it's not like it didn't start here it came from someplace else Gejiwa. and so it you know if something that's a mitigan sickness you take care of it like a mitigan would um i think that uh, there are some you know some instances with my mom the mamakai and I'm not putting it down. I'm not saying they can't. It can, it can work depending on you know what what the situation is or who it is or whatever. But the majority of the time, like how much this this coronavirus is that that um, that you're trying to protect everybody. And if you bring in and if you if you go to somebody's house, like whatever, to to have them work on you, then then that's up to that person or. But I, I know that a lot of them won't say no, they'll, they'll, they'll treat you, whatever. But uh, I'm still with them. And so they were talking about it with Mike and uh, Chukamaga, you know, in the creation myth, it talks about, um, there's a story about the ego man and how he was killing all these people. And then oh yeah, he came and killed the ego man. And all these people are laying around and he woke them up, you know. He, he uh, made them come back alive. And each group that came back alive started to um, behave differently and had a different language because what they say in that story is Tashmu, you know, they died for a while and so they forgot how to be all them. They didn't know their language, they didn't know how to. So that's where Itoi sent them out. And in the old, old, old stories, it was Edom, the tribes that live around the Seri, Taromara, Yaki, you know. Um, the river tribes, you know, those guys. They were the ones that Mopaag, but as the other tribes came in, as the Juj come came in, and the uh, Mayas and the Aztec, whoever was with Kino, then they started adding those people, Matriga Mopaua, and send them away. And then after that, it was the uh, Mirgan and the Juj come and the Chichino, you know, and then the, even the close Lahum, which like the Polynesians, you know, Ma that, that it says that they woke them up and this is how they acted like so he sent them away so that thing is kind of like you know they were once all of them but they died for a while so they went away but they're going to come back because you know this is their home see a lot of Mirgan especially some of the older women that I talk to in different places you know at workshops or whatever they'll say I always feel home in the desert I just love to be here. I live in New York, but I love to come back to the desert. And in my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, because he thought he made it that way. So, you know, he went away. But <clears throat> the thing was, about the Mama Yusha, the one time was that when um, when the people came back, like a Mirgan and the church coming all this, when they came back, it was said that there was a lot of uh, bad things were going to happen. So, God would have joked the uh, Himadan. It, a lot of it was going to change. That was predicted long before you know anybody really knew that that things were going to change. I don't know how they knew about this mamakai. They knew, so they it changed. Um, so, but in that one we were talking about it with with uh, my grandfather Chamaicho Ag and about some uh, some different stuff. Guys, that these guys and Chamaicho Ag and way before you know when the 
George come came and brought the saints and all that stuff, that somebody had mentioned that Edom, these uh, Birgit and George come, they come and there's a lot of bad things that are going to happen. They're going to take away a lot of the culture, you know, they're going to try to do this and that, they're going to try to take away our lifestyle and all this stuff. But it was mentioned uh, that there's a man that, that was sent by God or was was uh, sent by Eth or Jehovah Demarco or somebody, one of the creators. They knew that bad things were going to come, so they, he sent this man with them to my tuum and give us some kind of hope. And that's what he said. Jesus, Jesus, Maria, You know that they would, um, they would give us some kind of hope along, along with you know with this because the autumn culture is going to change. So it's kind of like that. Like, uh, to me, like this, uh, and we're trying to respond to it in in our autumn ways and just just much, which is generally okay but again what you know the sickness so we have to do that you know and I thought about um, you know the long time ago when when they first did the smallpox and the measles and you know chicken pox or whatever the Mirgan came and they uh, the doctors the IHS doctors started to give us uh, inoculations so the communities that were close to the water you know like I'm, I'm a hero guy, you know, but you and 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 everybody's okay, but there were some communities that were further out, but be a hero guy. And I remember those stories, my mom, that these kids would go and sit on the water tower, and oh, good that to get, and they'll see a you know car coming way over there, and they'll be looking, and hey, my guy, you need the good much coming, so they saw it, and they'll say, oh, that's the nurse, that's the doctor coming, they're gonna give us shots, and they would take off some of the adults, but. Uh, but uh, that they didn't want the shot, so a lot of them were were passing away, and I think that in time, with them, uh, they started talking to other people, and they found out that that people weren't dying, you know, like no crib death, or they were actually surviving some of the um, the diseases because not being agamata So they um, they started to accept the inoculations and so oh yeah we join coming up with it and now it's kind of like standard nobody thinks about it but that was what it used to be how much you know a baby's born in the hospital and they give you the shots right away and so we're living to be like 70 80 whereas before uh, people didn't live that long so there was that again so um, that that that's why uh, things happen and it changes our, our life how much it changed a lot from all of them how they used to do things a long time ago and how we've gotten to this point how much and I mentioned before uh, when somebody used to die a long time ago like 700 years ago if it was in the summertime like how much with temperatures like a hundred degrees or whatever somebody dies you have to find a cool place real fast because has to arc because the body will start to decay right away a long time ago, like how much we don't we don't think about it, but a long time ago, uh, they didn't have morgues and freezers and air conditionings and you know fans or anything, so they had to just do something real fast. So if a person passed away, like in the morning, usually maybe by evening time they're already buried, because again, up chewing. And in time, as the church come came in and started teaching us the rosary and all that stuff. And now you have like the all night wakes and stuff. But the feeding part, that was uh, like again 400 years ago when the workers came and dug the hole and then they did the thing and they buried them right away. Again, because of that, um, you know, so they buried them almost right away, like within hours, you know, when it's really, really hot. And um, so they will bury them, and then after that, they will feed the workers. And then, so that continued, and now how much it's like, like if somebody comes to your funeral or wake or, you know, like or whatever, you have to feed them. Could, uh, um, that had its purpose a long time ago. But, you know, it's graduated to this time, so Masapo, you know, people do that. Um, 
I know a lot of places um, like in the new um, the newer generations or the new families sometimes they won't do a feeding they'll just do like uh, like snacks or they'll just have like cookies or you know um, cakes or donuts or whatever and coffee and that's how they do it and um, but again but they really don't really didn't do any work they're coming but it's graduated into that hooky so again uh, it changes so but when the sun winter time like if somebody passed away then they could could put them someplace mosuwa and the body won't decay so it will go you know like they could do the all night or even days cut before they bury somebody but it's the same thing people come and then they do the the hole and then they you know they feed them the one thing is that if somebody lived in a community like say um, Santa Rosa and their relatives lived in uh, Sikor Himat or maybe Komababi or someplace and if the person passed away like maybe there's a girl that was from there and she um, she was married to this guy and so they moved to the man's house so they're living at the man's house and then she gets sick and then even when she's sick or even like well, there's been a lot of accidental and sudden deaths you know a long time ago there's a lot of stories about people that fell and hit their head on the rock and then died so it wasn't like a sickness so they would send a runner to, to the community wherever their relatives are you know so go tell that family and then if that family whatever they're doing gets together you know they wait for them uh, but a lot of times the elders couldn't come the babies couldn't come the women couldn't come if they had uh, children that they're nursing but somebody might come the fast runners especially but uh, then then there's the fourth day after you know they do the fourth day and then on the fourth day then people gathered and that's what that was for they would come home and so they would do that fourth day so um, that's how that that worked uh, as far as the, um, the the sudden deaths right now you can't do that anymore I mean there is a law that says that if you die that you're supposed to bury within 24 hours but if it's a uh, it's a death that's not um, it's not natural that they're gonna investigate it so you can't you can't bury the person until they're finished with the investigation the autopsy and all that stuff but a long time ago that wasn't there so the boju and and um, so things have changed like how much uh, people live in LA or New York or you know Hawaii or whatever and when their relatives pass away then they'll say we'll wait for them to come home so they'll be like two weeks one month whatever um, but the Mauk, and then, then they bury them after they come. A long time ago, that wasn't possible uh, because again, more in high check these things. So they would they would do that, and um, so how much that um, the um, coronavirus is out there, and they're asked to do certain things. Uh, a certain number of people can be there. Even the religious services, there's certain you know some things and and uh, we're asked to or we're told um, to much about walk to the our masks and that um, and that you are supposed to like um, keep distance six feet and um, all those rules with the new how much and we're you know we're doing that a lot of the people and, and the funerals but and again I'm just think, talking about how a long time ago 600 years ago that through all those times things changed because now we have refrigerators and morgues and whatever so things changed and right now it's kind of like with with the coronavirus it's going to change to something different and it has changed but I don't know what's coming next and it's going to cause another change uh, I know it's must be the masma amja the gautam you know, you uh, the way that um, that was lined out for us, Kashui. You almost can't really do that anymore, um, because we're told a lot of times to stay home, especially those that that have chronic diseases, be and uh, 
and people that are susceptible, especially babies or um, like uh, the elder elders, you know, Piamohi. And yeah, Mahastahatak, but at the same time, um, you have to protect not yourself, just only you know. You wear your mask not to protect yourself, but to protect those you live with. Because um, if, if somebody is at your house and you're living there and they go to like South or Sakaton or whatever, District 6 or whatever, and they're going to be walking along that wherever they're going to go and they're going to go places, they're not going to tell you, maybe they won't tell you, but they're going to come home and they're going to bring all that stuff that they brought. Now if there's an elder or somebody that's susceptible, they might catch it there and then for you it might not be like you have some jew because you're um, you're okay you're young and it comes in and it goes and um, but for hukam and then if you're there at your house and you're doing stuff touching stuff and other people are there and they don't know where you went and whatever and then you go they go or somebody else goes out to visit a friend or whatever then they're also carrying that. They might be carrying that. So that's why Moptaga, you know, to stay home and don't go out, you know. Uh, the way I understand it is if you stay home, then you're not going out there and you're not infecting anybody and they're not infecting you. So, you know, just stay home. So that's the reality. And a lot of people, you know, be amateur. Um, but the other thing is that there's a lot of people that won't be walking high. has heard it. Um, they really don't uh, respect um, the old way. In the olden times, a long time ago, people lived in the community, and they had one leader, and the leader would tell same in Hapat of the Jew. And if you didn't like what the leader was doing, just move to another community. But the one thing we were told was that you never leave your grandparents' graves behind. Always need to take care of them. So somebody needs to stay. That's the old, old thinking. How much, you know, people go out and, you know, Kamu Ki Hasko, like Phoenix, or, you know, Kamu Yamakoch, Colorado, or whatever. Amasapa, but somebody needs to stay to take care of the graves. Again, Mamhajit. So that's why the families are there. Um, but the thing is, Mok, and, and it's different from a long time ago. Now it's like and so um, the olden days, long time ago, that's how people were taught and then how much is very different because people are moving out and they're walking all over and, and the community leader said something people followed that, they respected that and if people didn't follow it, and you know, the Muslim knew that, and somebody would mention, you know, so and so is doing the Muslim knew that, and after a while, what happened is they would throw them out of the community. They could stone them, you know, or, or push them out, and they would, they would leave, and then they're not, not allowed back in the community. Well, maybe for some reason, I know that there's some stories of people coming back in the myth, but generally you're, you're banished. Somebody was asking, you know, is it banishment? Is it, you know, is it an autumn him the god of culture? Oh, yeah. The myth is full of those. One of the famous ones is Hawk Yox. What she was doing in the community, and so they banished her. Hoi, a Micah. So she left, and we don't do that because of the law so much, but there is a process that happens sometimes. So if you don't, you're not agreeing with the leader, you know, you need to leave or, you know, it doesn't matter because if the leader says something and you're living in that community, you have to do that thing. That's the respect. But how much? The leaders say something and people don't want to do it, they won't do it. But, uh, and again, a long time ago, that, that they trusted their leaders to tell them. And if somebody made a mistake, then it was the leader's fault for the community. And then, um, you know, but when people just do things and but that was the other belief that they used to have. If you do a lot of stuff and you're not listening and you're not paying attention and you're breaking the law or whatever, then the the elements outside are going to start to misbehave. They're not going to give you the stuff. You know, Sometimes the rain didn't come. 
and they will find out that somebody in the community is doing something or somebody in the community is you know like acting this way or whatever and that's when that that will tell them to correct yourself or we're gonna banish you and so that's how it happened but how much with the uh, people and you know like I seen a lot of uh, youth young people that mohook you if somebody's older than you then you you respect them but when this day and age you know elders try to tell kids to correct themselves and they just cuss back they just yell back or they just you know and you know when we were young and then somebody found that out from us our parents used to get mad at us you know unless they were drunk or something but and uh, do what they're saying because they're telling you to what to do in the community uh, the elders are there for that but my money and if you don't like it you don't like it but you still gotta do it so that was the old attitude so again with the leaders on him but we were also talking uh, with, with Mike about in behalf the, the way that I understand this coronavirus you know like when you get it it goes into your mouth and your nose and, and it kind of makes its way to your lungs and your heart and then in there your lungs are full of these like like little openings and they get their oxygen in there and then it goes and it goes into the blood but either coronavirus sends this virus thing it's like shosha you know like it's not phlegm and it blocks that so you can't breathe or it won't let the air through because it's blocking that and there and it's in there and so when when somebody um, comes and tries to put medicine it, and they have to to find the right medicine that's what those we're looking for a cure for to push that out to wash that out the Gamal boy Jew and so people can breathe that's why you're talking about ventilators you know breathe and then kaboy boy the and the medicine gets in there and hopefully it'll work and then I'll take it all out but with this virus this coronavirus and that's what's killing people that you can't breathe and then it just slows down your heart and because your heart you need oxygen in your heart to make your blood go and all that stuff so and then that's what I understand that's why they're saying don't you know breathe out you know six feet away because they're figuring six feet away the, the, the coronavirus will go and then they'll just you know as you're talking that's why they say sometimes if you're outside and the wind is blowing this way and you're talking to them but come up with him but if you're standing there and the wind changes your spit where your your posture be we can go to that person it's just all small particles they're not you can't see them they're just like out so if you're if you have the virus and you touch something and you you know touch something and then oh yeah somebody comes along and they touch it and then they go and be a match and so they touch their mouth it's right there close to your mouth and then it goes in there again the very small minute amounts I think your body can take care of it but for those that are like they can't they they can't there's no way for them to fight it off it just goes in there and it blocks it and that's what that's why you know and they just go down you know so that's what it is uh, the way they understand it and the only real way to 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 make sure that you're not getting it is just to stay home and um, you know just block everything off hug a mom kim mom those are the people that should be there but a lot of times you got that cousin over there or that you know that Ramadan now or whatever you don't understand it and you let them into your house you don't know where they've been maybe they went to town or maybe they're at the other person's house over there and they had the corona it won't show up sometimes you know especially if you're healthy and and you can walk around you know with, with the corona virus for like a long time having it in your system and you're breathing out because maybe you went someplace somebody had it and somebody else had it and gave it to that person gave it, and you got it but you don't know you have it so you're going around and affecting that's why that the safest thing to do is just to stay home uh, just within your family don't let anybody in 
And I really like some people that uh, they're doing little signs. Put it outside your house. Stay away from here. Or wear your mask, you know, if you're going to come in here. And the masks are, um, they're a good deterrent, but it's not 100%, must, you know, just by wearing a mask. And like I said, the only way to, to, to do it is to stay inside. So if somebody comes to your house, you can look outside and wave at them, you know, different things. And they're even saying, like, like food or whatever. I want you outside. They're supposed to wait, like, a certain amount of time because it could be on there, on that thing that you get, mail and all that stuff. So there's a lot of things, you know, details and all that stuff. But the main thing is to, to stay away from people. Now again, this is the Mirgan, you know, Kamam Jirihi, Mirgan Jewel Mumuk, and I'm not, um, I'm not only using Mirgan as the outside world. I'm not saying, you know, Habatam Jiri Jewel, because we don't know they do those, you know, things that um, try to find out Mohobi Am him only so that they can see what, where the strain is, so they can find a medicine. That's why they do that. But, um, so if you get sick, you're supposed to call um, clinic and then they'll tell you that that's all you. But um, if somebody does have that um, coronavirus and you report, they'll ask you, where did you go yesterday? Where did you go the day before? Where did you go? I'm because they're trying to see where did you go so that maybe if another person comes in and they say like the same thing, I went to over there and another person, then you know that somebody was over there because they all have a commonality of that Mbamji team. And so if you went to Walmart a certain day, they can do it. It's the same thing like they do like a baby formula or medicines when when somebody gets sick and the doctor found out that it was that medicine, they'll ask you, where did you get this? Oh, I got it at Walgreens. And so then they check Walgreens and then they find out, oh, there's other people that are getting sick. So it's this medicine, this one. And so then they do that. That's called contact tracing. So that's how this works and that's all they're doing when they're asking you those questions just answer honestly and then after that then you're gonna to have to take care of yourself quarantine uh, some people don't realize how much goes into that I'm just hearing stories some of them my friends they have to wipe down everything and when you know like the one of my friends he had a uh, one of their um, relatives their family members that every time that person went to the restroom, they had to go in there and wipe everything. Even though that person didn't touch it, you have to wipe it because it can, you know, or whatever, it can get on that thing. And like I said, masks are one thing, but while you're wearing the mask, what are you touching? You go to Walmart and you touch this and you touch this and you touch this. And then you go and you're ready to get come out and get in your vehicle and you touch your mask. And that's why some, you know, want you to, to use the the alcohol shawaga, that white thing. So that way, take a more more, and then after that, you can whatever. Because if you touch something in your car, could be that. Uh, some of the things that they're telling us to do to wipe stuff down. So I'm just sharing you know, the suggestions that they're saying, but that's the main reason is that um, that to take care of yourself. And there's a lot of stories that. People can share about stuff, matas jasaju, or how they're taking care of themselves. But again, um, I wanted to uh, let you know that. And then the other thing is that the big thing is that nyamakayamidam experts from baagang on the radio on you know different news, and then reading a lot of. Well, I get a lot of people sending me articles, so I read that, and then you know, if one article says something, maybe it's true. Two, three. If you get four articles from different places saying the same thing, there's something going on. And so Udo and the Chinese um, at Wuhan, when they first came out with that uh, announcement, I, I took that and I was wondering, they gave one again. And then you started seeing in China, and I have Facebook friends from, you know, the other side of the world. And they're saying, yeah, you know, so wow, okay. Because it's not just the newspaper, but actual individuals. So, and so when it was coming towards this place, uh, it was kind of like, you know, how is it going to be? And then when all of a sudden hit and people weren't taking care of themselves, 
then okay, okay, uh, okay there's something to this you need to fi fight do something um, but like I said your body will take care of it but it's just that if you're susceptible and somebody might think that they're you know oh, not, I'm healthy whatever I always remember Flojo and I'm the Flojo that took to a lady that it murdered them and then all of a sudden she just died in her sleep. Her husband woke up one day and, she, and detected her and she had a problem that she knew about, but no, I'm, I'm healthy. And there's a number of people that have done that. They're healthy and all of a sudden they just die, you know. They just didn't know about it. So in that same way, you know, you don't really know if you're sick until you something happens. Um, one of my friends said that they have a hole in his heart and he didn't know all his life and now he's like 40 something but all that time he had and then and Goyamunko and they went and they checked it and they finally found out but all that time he could have you know something could have happened but he, you know I'm a, I'm a guy ocean you thought so there's that those kind of stories that are being told now that they're saying that that disease came and the expert, expert, experts that I keep reading about is that um, they're not going to have a cure, probably. They're not going to have anything that, that will take care of this probably up until like next year in January 2021. That's probably the estimated time, the earliest. But even then, they're saying maybe not. Maybe by December. 2021 maybe then they will have some kind of a cure maybe maybe it'll happen sooner but I don't know because even after that when the cure comes they're gonna have to make a lot and then they're gonna have to test it and you know when you go to the clinic and you know you get an inoculation of something um, they actually like put it in your body so that are little amounts so that way your body can learn to matochukya so how is that going to happen? So even if not the Ganoi to line up and all get inoculations and all this stuff, or is there something else? So even that is going to take longer. So we were talking about uh, Mike Wim because, you know, we talk about culture and, you know. So we're mentioning about even the, the old time, long time ago, what was supposed to be like, you can do that. But uh, the ceremony is Mamuanaks. Kohimori. Nawiti, Taiwaki. At the castle, you? you know that Matabeha, you know, it, they haven't had it in a long time, but there's some people and they want us to do it again, and you know, not to Anako to do it again. But that's the question if we're still in this this lockdown or whatever they call it, is it still going to happen? How is it going to happen? Because, like they said, but yet when you're singing, you're pushing it out a lot more. So that virus, if you have it, is going out to people. And then the dancing, how you have to hold each other's hand and all that stuff. How is that happening? So, we were just kind of mentioning it. So I wanted to just say, you know, well, I don't know what's going to happen. But I know that either this coronavirus came in here and it just changed a lot of stuff. Like I mentioned, the funerals can't have birthday parties. I know the 4th of July is coming up, and uh, I don't know, but maybe some of you will see this video when 4th of July is already over. But I saw some people in town that were from here that were buying uh, fireworks. And, you know, there was some other guy that was saying that they're going to have a barbecue 4th of July and and I don't know if that person got the word that you can't do that or are they still going to do it you know some of the young people there's a kind of a disrespect for her especially a leader or a um, an elder um, so I don't know we have to tell our granddaughters and you know eat them hike uh, the um, the kids you know about that that's something that they're gonna remember if we ever get a cure because maybe we won't get a cure I don't know I'm not saying what's gonna happen I'm just throwing it out there you need to be ready and like I've been telling people you know at the school um, 
with the TOCC and the above, you need to be ready. You need to go out and buy some good equipment so that you can do Zoom meetings or do go to meetings. You know, it's all about you. Got, um, sometimes the phone that that are kind of like the um, Moises Sukuk and they go out, you know, during the meetings or whatever. So if we're going to be doing this for a long time, you need to do that. I don't know if the districts or the um, nation or somebody is going to. You know, maybe upgrade everybody's phone. I don't think so. I don't. I hope not. But it's really up to each individual, Matamayanako, and around your house, you know. So there's also that, and then we're talking about it. We kind of went down the year, you know, Shacho Bim after the, the, you know, the, the wine feast is the, Shacho is that Labor Day or something? Mago you? People are used to celebrating those things. You know. Their celebrations. People say, "Happy Mother's Day." Happy Mother's Day. And my, you know, my thing is, every day is Mother's Day. Every day is Father's Day. Either Mirka and they, they only select one day to do that thing, like Thanksgiving. You know, one day to be thankful. You're supposed to do that through the whole. So again, birthdays and all that stuff on him. So that weekend is coming, and then after that, Marina. I'm hoping that Mato, they'll find a cure or they'll find something and figure something out because, you know, when you, when you see me, mommy. But I know the churches are closest because the, the Pope closed the churches all over the world and then how much there's certain countries or whatever. So I decide I'm going to go to Marina and we're still in the lockdown. Get over there, find out that the church is closed. They're not going to open us, Jack. Coronavirus. Coronavirus. COVID, COVID, uh, this in wave. Mm. I don't know. So, I think I'm about you because even how much the religious services are like Matapreu, it really changed. Shato Chuhug and then the other one is Iya. I don't know what's going to happen. Then again, respect what they say. Respect the leaders. And they are going to tell us how about the Masma about you. And then it's up to us to respond. Don't get mad. You know, if anything, get mad at the virus. And how you get mad at the virus? Stay home. You know, I am with that. That's how you show that virus. You're in control. And that it's not controlling you, but you're in control because you can say, I'm going to stay home. You know, whatever. Christmas. Thanksgiving, Shatochu. Thanksgiving, you can still eat turkey, you know, but you can't invite, you know, their relatives or whatever. Um, I remember outside and my Jamki came outside and Thanksgiving time would come and then this Mirgan would say, Can you come to eat with us Thanksgiving dinner? Sure, and they would have turkey and all this stuff. And then after that, I would knock out and say, Oh, we. We, we had Thanksgiving, and there was an Indian there, a real Indian, Native American. Mm -hmm. And if I knew that, I wouldn't have gone, but okay, but the senior Googles. Now you can't, they can't do that anymore, unless their Indian lives with them. And you know, not be how much be that must map Jewish. What's going to happen? Christmas. Shrato Jew and the Tomorrow, Santa Claus, is he's going to be, you know, like. I don't know, but I think, again, trust the leadership. Then they will tell us, you know, how about the Masma Baju as far as this place is. Um, I kind of um, trust, the, and when I say trust literature, your local community. I don't mean that guy over there in Washington, D.C., or those people. Mohasami Chich and the Bigot Theatokit. There's just, it's just not, you know, Mohas Chich is not, not truthful. And when somebody says that, look at what they're saying or what he's saying, and later on it start, it gets proven that Mokpiwagim, then you have to really say, like, Piwagim, not true. So, um, how is it going to be, Hugi, those things? Um, so, I'm just um, mentioning that. Um, but, you know, people are too much, uh, they're tired of hearing about um, the um, coronavirus, they're tired of hearing about this and that, you post stuff and 
or you tell them about the, you know, this and they're tired of hearing it, they don't want to hear it anymore, whatever. But in the autumn culture, but uh, another thing that is used to repeat everything. Repeat everything, how come? But well, I heard it already. Repeat it and say it again. That's job. So tell me again. I already know, I know, I know. Don't tell me to repeat and tell them again. Keep saying it until they don't respond anymore. And then say it some more. Keep repeating it. Keep sending out your notes and messages. Stay home. And that's why I said about okay, that uh, the families that are putting those signs outside their their door or you know around their fence, you know, saying that I think Kuwa is has some and um um is doing some and you know pretty soon everybody's gonna be doing the Mayush and, and so these um this um people that are passing by they will see that you know see that sign and maybe somebody goes by there every day five times but at least once in a while somebody will go by there just is their first time and they're gonna see that oh or you can change the sign and make a different color to but yeah those guys change their signs yeah what does it say wear a mask and you need to go out and, and get masks not just one but a whole bunch and you know my home and if you're if you're uh, if you have money and whatever else if you can buy extra masks then when you see somebody out there give it to them don't matter what skin color they have or who they are you can offer it if they don't want it come on but then move out of the way so um, no pias, no anything for a while, but that's the way we're going to kill it, it's just to clock down and just stay at home. Yeah, the nation might not do it, the state might not do it, but you can do it. Happy Hujur. So stay home and, and everything will get taken care of. People out there getting sick, you're staying home. That's the only way I think, Maktonyuko. But again, watch out what's coming to your house, you know, anything you bring in. So. Um, you stay home on Yuko and um, and it, if you keep doing that and everybody does that then it'll be a shorter time but because people keep walking around and that's all and disrespecting and going to dance and you know being with your friends and all that stuff that's just making it stay around longer because again Mike was telling me kind of inspired me to you know when they got and I did tell him I was going to do this and don't tell him though because you don't need to know. I'm just kidding. No, um, I'll, I'll send send this out. But it's up to you, and and if you hopefully you'll listen to it and just take a few things out of this and then tell others. My agade, share the information because um, I think that if you if you just keep it to yourself, then that person that you didn't tell might infect you one of these days. So let them know. Okay. I get you, and uh, I know this is always a long talk when I talk, but um, I guess my family won't be too much. I'm sure I'm not sure. Ah ha ha. 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 Ah 